Hello everyone, I'm Colin Simpson from the Televisors Network. Welcome to our first webinar for 2021. Today we're going to take a little bit of a look at uh, MS Teams for teaching and for the Televisors community and have a fast, slow chat. So I'm just going to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which many of us are meeting today. In my case, it's the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. And I'd like to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Just uh, if you are not familiar with the Televisors Network, we are a community of practitioners uh, made up of people working as education technologists, learning designers, academic developers, and people in a host of similar roles, um, because there are at least 40 or 50 different titles of people doing this kind of work. So I, I do want to make some time for the slow chat, because I think this is a really good activity. Um, I'll probably just uh, keep an eye on the chat now, and um, I'm gonna hand over to Kate. Hi everyone, uh, do you want me to control the slides, Colin, or is that the easiest? Uh, yeah, you should be able to. Yeah, yep. great. Um, uh, first of all, just a shout out to Wendy, uh, Wendy Tiller, who, um, kicked off our slow chat in on Twitter. So for those of you who aren't on Twitter, this is a good chance to for us to recap, but also uh, have you know a fast conversation uh, under the same topics. Um, it would be really great um, if we can use some of these to build up a blog post. So um, if uh, you're happy to have your chat comments included, um, then, um, I, for the most part, I'm going to try and uh, write a bit of a summary. And if you, um, and I'll, I'll uh, you know, if there's people who don't want their comments included, please just let me know and I'll, I'll remove them. But um, otherwise, it'd be great to sort of uh, try and mention kind of across the different places where we've had a bit of a spread of um, comments on these. So uh, Wendy had the slow chat. Um, 12th of mid-March, so last week or the week before now, um, and it was a great chance to kick off before we had this session and we'll probably run some more slow chats uh, moving forward. So the, the aim of a slow chat is that you can post on Twitter, converse with other people over the space of a day or two. Um, so for, for those of you, if you've got a chance to do it in the chat, but if you prefer not to use the chat, um, I, you can always use your raise hand icon to take the mic. So I'm gonna start off with um, the first question, which is what's your primary method for connecting with colleagues? Um, and so please feel free to add your comment to the chat, or if you'd prefer to introduce yourself over the mic, uh, feel free to raise your hand. There should be a little raise hand icon at the bottom of your screen. So we've got a few people saying Teams, Twitter, Slack. That's great. A few, uh, a few options there. Teams. Excellent. Yammer, oh, that's a blast from the past. I haven't seen Yammer mentioned in a while. Uh, and email, uh, old school email. How, what are people's thoughts around email? Do you, I, I personally uh, am not a big fan of email. I try where possible to move uh, into another space. So um, currently I am using Teams and Slack and Twitter to, uh, navigate my professional networks. Um, for work, I use Slack and Teams and some email. Um, and then outside of work uh, for things like this and other professional networks, I'm using Slack, uh, Teams and Twitter primarily. Uh, someone's mentioned monday.com. Uh, I think that's like a project management tool. Did, did you want to speak to that one? <coughs> Yeah, that was me. We do use it uh, for project management and yeah, it has a tagging function much like Teams and we use that as communication channel as well. Great, thanks Carmen. 
Um, so I might just move on to the next question, but please feel free to keep, uh, if you haven't had a chance to respond yet, feel free to keep adding your responses in the chat. Um, what gets in the way of you connecting and collaborating with colleagues and why? Uh, are there particular issues involved, whether that's technical or maybe something else? Oh, and somebody's mentioned Zoom from before. Of course, I think we've all uh, been using Zoom quite a lot lately. So um, just seeing some of the responses coming in for this question, sounds like time is a big, uh, a big barrier to connecting more with people. Uh, it's it's quite interesting to note that time seems to be the higher priority uh, in the comments than say things like uh, the fact that we've moved to not being uh, co-located potentially. So a lot of us have been, um, or at least me in Melbourne, I'm still working from home and uh, remotely connecting with a lot of my colleagues. Uh, it doesn't sound like that's being... Um, much of a barrier or something that's mentioned as a, as a potential issue as yet. But if it is, I'd love to, if someone wanted to talk more about that and their experiences, I would welcome you to uh, raise your hand and take the mic. We've got um, some technical issues raised as a barrier. Um, so learning new tools and systems, and particularly if you're working across different teams. Uh, Penny, did you want to speak to your comment around doing um, collaborative tasks online? Thanks, Kate. So the I, all the problems of using uh, joint authoring together and trying to work out what everybody can manage, like a big the range of ability in using online programs between. Uh, the teaching staff, the ed tech people, academic developers. So trying to get somewhere where everyone feels happy and wants to add content and and um, change other people's work around. That was a problem for the people doing ABC learning design in the UK and they were working on trying to make something work, for example, using um, Trello. So yeah, the problem of jumping about from platform to platform, desperately seeking something that'll work as well as a piece of paper. Yeah, I, I also have some similar issues with that. We've been using Teams uh, with, for some of our development processes and there's been, I guess, um, for the most part, people have picked up Teams okay, but um, dealing with document management and version control has still been something that um, we've struggled with. And so probably uh, having, I think maybe, setting some, some clarity around what, what sort of methods we would prefer and how we want to work would have been useful as well as some training on how to work with different documents in different ways would, would have maybe saved me some heartache. Um, as well as, yeah, the similar kind of um, issues you were talking about, Wendy, where, where we visualise and map um, uh, our new subject designs and working with tools that are then going to allow people to work collaboratively or have visibility over stuff. Um, particularly since some of the tools we don't have institutional licenses for. We don't have anything that is equivalent in-house and we're having to kind of, you know, set up our own accounts. Um, all right. Uh, I'm just going to quickly check the chat and move on to the next question. Uh, I think the other issue was just around time for setting boundaries. And that sounds like something that um, is coming up as a, as a bit of a concern. So, um, I'm just going to move to question two, but please feel free to keep chatting. Um, what have you been reading? Uh, throw up any references in the chat. Uh, if you've got some great resources that you would like to share. Uh, Sue's got some there. I'm just going to um, encourage you to keep posting those in. Um, and uh, I might keep um, keep going with these. Uh, with the next question, but if you do have a particular resource or a particular book or article that isn't easy to share um, and you wanted to describe that or discuss that a bit more because you think that other people here would enjoy it and it would be worth seeking out, then feel free to uh, raise your hand and take the mic.
Okay, I'm going to move on to the next one. Uh, so, sorry, I might just very quickly point out that we've got a Zotero group set up. Um, so Zotero is a like a reference management system like Mendeley and I know there's another one, EndNote, something like that. Um, and there's like a little group within Televisor. So a lot of people share those kind of resources there. The end. And I've just put a link to that Zotero group in the chat. So um, you should be able to join like it's not publicly available because um, we do share articles in there, but um, you can see the resource list straight away and you can um, request to join uh, and we'll you know, usually grant people access. So just let us know. Oops, oh, sorry. Uh, what sort of professional development are you hoping to do this year? Do you think, is there budget in your institution or are you going to have to seek out alternatives? Um, are there things that you're hoping to go to? I'm, I'm personally hoping to go to Ascolite. Uh, Colin's going to Armadale too. I think there'll be a few of us going to Ascolite this year. Um, if you don't have budget for formal professional development, are there um, other ways that you're continuing to develop your own professional practice? And, and what kind of tips might you give to others to um, accessing formal kinds of networks or development. So we've got uh, a few people mentioning that budget is a concern or, a, a, you know, a, there's a lack of budget this year. Um, there may need to be some Ascolite scholarships, so that would be um, something to consider. A um, couple of people looking to do some professional accreditation, which is great. Um, I've still been uh, registering for online conferences. I know there's the remote summit coming up soon. I'll put a link to that in the chat too. Uh, it is a um, it is a US based uh, conference, but it is free and it's fully online. Uh, Wendy mentions that the Press Ed conference uh, is on Twitter later today. That's a fully um, Twitter-based conference where people present short, um, you know, short presentations around how they're using WordPress in education and research. So that's another one to um, check out. Um, I personally love Twitter for professional development, but not everybody likes to be on Twitter and that is understandable. So um, I've just put the remote summit link in. We can uh, post some of these things in later. But um, uh, a couple of other things, uh, just if, if there are professional development needs that you do have, and you feel like they might fit under the banner of teleadvisors or if there are things that you want to help get off the ground, um, then, you know, please feel free to come and chat to us. Um, we've been trying to get a, um, like a, a reading group started and I know a couple of people outside of have uh, at least one, at least one person who I used to work with has, has mentioned interest in um, helping getting that off the ground a bit more. Um, so there are ways that we can build in some, you know, further networks or little subgroups where that's relevant. So if, or if you want to help kind of get an idea off the ground, um, you don't necessarily have to take it all on yourself, but it's, you know, it always helps us if there are things happening and if other people want to help out. So, um, if you see that there's a gap that, that might be uh, worth filling or you have an interest in helping to start something, please come and, you know use of discussion in, in uh, either Moodle or Teams or, or, you know, drop us a line and we can um, look at, you know, what we, we might be able to support. Okay. Uh, oh, that's the right one. Give us an example of advisor work you do that is not tech related. Ooh. Uh, just on the previous one, uh, Alison notes she's got an Ascolite mentor. Um, if you, you're probably uh, outside of the time for getting an Ascolite mentor this year, but the Ascolite Community Mentorship Program is a great um, free professional development opportunity. Uh, I'm a mentor this year. Um, I've been a mentee in the past and found it really valuable. I know that um, 
Oriol, who's in here today, she's been a mentor and is uh, continuing to be a mentor. Uh, and I, she's terrific. So there's lots of great people involved uh, and that's, you know, costs you nothing and you can tailor it to your needs. So Ascolate does have a lot of uh, professional development opportunities there, um, including uh, things like CMALT and some other things that you might want to get in touch, you know, get into. Um, question four, uh, an advisor, advisor work that's not tech related. Uh, we've got people mentioning Pastoral care is and counselling as a key um, task or or you know aspect of their role that is not tech related. Does anybody want to speak more to that? Uh, I'll turn the mic off if you want to take the mic. Yeah, this is so. Um I think one of the things I've found is that you, you get a, or for me anyway, I get an inquiry from somebody to help them with something that is course design or tech related. So you, you go along and you assist them with that. And whilst you're there, you, you just start to pick up the vibes that everything's not okay. And, and we know that people are not okay. Um, so yeah, ask the question, hey, how are you doing? What's what's happening? And so many times uh, the, the tears start and people start to talk about problems that they're dealing with that might be work related or often it's things that are happening outside of work. So it's yeah, a lot of a lot of listening. Um, and yes, Colin, a lot of a lot of often it is just venting. Um, but it's you know, it's not part of the job. It's not something that probably most of us were ever really trained for. Uh, and I've, I've put back up in the chat a couple of years ago, I did Lifeline's Accidental Counselor course, which I just found so beneficial. Um, not only in giving me techniques, uh, not to provide counselling because we're not counsellors and, and I think it's really important that we, we know that, but techniques to listen better uh, techniques to be able to, to give support and to know where to recommend people. Um, so, so important. And yes, mental health first aid uh, is another good one. I think we've got that um, running here later this year. So yeah, just, you know, get the support. The, the counsellor one also gives you a lot of support in how to manage that yourself. Because when you've got people dumping on you all the time, you need to look after yourself. That's such a great point, Sue. Um, and it's yeah, I think it's something that is is I would argue it is a, a key part of the role, but it's probably one of those piece, those um, aspects that is maybe a, a a hidden part or an invisible part um, or less visible part. It's not some something that's always uh, put onto position descriptions, but um, it really is important. Uh, you know, when we're dealing people to uh, to show empathy and and you know obviously if people are struggling then they're not going to be responsive to changing their practice so it's something that we just have to work through and and support them where we can um, some great ideas for um, further resources and support for me that I'm going to take away um, last thanks so much Sue last one before we wrap up um, any last comments and shameless plugs whoa that's opening a can of worms um, oh, some, was that Rebecca raised her hand? Was that somebody raised their hand? Uh, feel free to take the mic. Maybe it was Rebecca left. If somebody does have their hand raised or wants to take the mic with any shameless plugs or last things. Great point. Add your blogs or portfolios. Um, that's always really valuable for us to see and, and share work and show what we're doing it's a good chance to to you know promote yourself kate shall we plug the portfolio form <laughs> go for it oh there you go set up an e-portfolio 27th of april thanks penny uh the forum is in sydney in october kate I think so, yes. It's in Sydney in, in late October. But yeah, the shut up, and <laughs> shut up and portfolio. I'll find the link. Um, but there's a great chance where if 
maybe you're not confident to share your portfolio or blog right now because you need to work on it, which is usually my case. Um, you could come to that session and just have some dedicated uh, working time and be surrounded by people who also need to do the same thing. So it's a good chance to just hold, hold ourselves accountable, have someone there who's uh, there to cheer you on. So um, thank you so much, everybody, for your comments and tips. And thanks again to Amanda for uh, her presentation around how she uses Microsoft Teams. It's been a really engaging conversation. Uh, Colin, did you have any last words that we need to end on? Um, no, just, just reiterate that um, if you are working in this space and you'd like to be part of the pilot, um, get in touch and we can add you and we can see how this is actually, well, if and how this will work for us. Um, and thanks, Kate, for bringing it home. And yeah, definitely thanks, Amanda. That was fantastic too. Thanks so much, everyone. Um, and also, if you do have other ideas for further webinars, please feel free to reach out, whether that's through our current Moodle site, through Teams, through Twitter, through email. We're fine with whatever channel you want to come to us with ideas for, um, or if you want to host one. Uh, someone's just raised their hand, feel free in the last minute to, if you want to take the mic. No, sorry, uh, but please feel free to reach out if you do have ideas around webinars or other things that, um, you know, you're happy to assist us to get off the ground because it's always great if we can, um, you know, be meeting the needs of, of this group. Thanks again.